Okay, so here we are. We've got a utility called Putty, and you can download this as a free utility on the internet. So search for Putty. And uh, then we need to know the IP address of our Raspberry Pi, as well as we need to have SSH enabled on the Pi. So those are manually things. The way to get to the IP address is, is best to connect a monitor and a keyboard and a mouse to your Raspberry Pi, and then do an IF config. Well, we'll have a brief look at that as well, but it is also covered in one of our other videos. So we're going to open this up here. And so it asks for that. The default username is Pi, P-I, and Raspberry. It's a good idea to change the password. In fact, you should definitely change the password on that. And then uh, what we're going to do is we're going to download uh, the software, the 3CX SBC password. And to do that, we type in a wget command. I'm going to paste it in here. Let's give that one more try. There we go. And so it's going to download. That was nice and quick. And now we need to install. So the install is done on another very simple command here. And this is going to take a minute. So we're going to speed through this and uh, we'll be back as soon as it's done. Now, in fact, you know, while we're waiting for this, I am going to show you one other thing here. Uh, and that is where you find the other credentials uh, for this. So, um, let's bring that over here. Uh, there's some information that you do need from 3CX. This is uh, this is it here. So you can see we're under settings. This is version 14. Version 15 is different, of course. But under security and 3CX tunnel, we've got tunnel password, a local IP uh, listening point. So you need to know all of these things. In our case, uh, this um, uh, the local IP is the same as the public IP. Now, a uh, fully qualified domain name, that would usually be a, a URL, uh, but we found that it's not that stable on the 3CX SBC, so we should be typing in uh, the IP address. It's less trouble. Um, and so if it's not behind a NAT, enter the public IP address. So for us, that's gonna be the same thing. Okay, the SIP port. My SIP port is different in this case. And then the tunnel password. So again, we get the tunnel password from your individual 3CX installation. And we don't have failover and we're not gonna use encryption. Okay, so that's all there is to it. You can also edit uh, the config file if there was any change. And, you know, normally I recommend that you do this as well. Uh, and it's going to be Etsy, and that's 3cxsbc.conf. Okay, here's the file. This is a program called Nano. Uh, and there's a few things that I like to change in here. First is the name, because this name actually shows up within the log files on the 3CX server. So I'm going to call this, uh, let's mouse down here. I'm going to call this um, SBC004, and that way in the logs we know which one is uh, the logs are coming from. Uh, everything else here is pretty straightforward. The memory card on this uh, Raspberry Pi is 16 gigs, so there's a lot of space, and so I'm going to elect it to turn on the um, uh, the file logging on this. Okay, there we go. 
So the exit, I go Control X. It's going to ask me if I want to save. I say yes. File name. And now we're going to reboot. So go S sudo uh, reboot, and that's going to reboot the SBC. Now, after this, you need to go back into the, your CBCX server uh, under the phone provisioning and provision particular phones to use this SBC. Uh, this is Dar with Helia. Thanks for watching. If you do have any questions, uh, we do have a uh, form or contact information below, or if you're a 3CX partner, of course, uh, give 3CX a call. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.